Hi everyone, welcome to Poetry and Talk. Poetry and Talk is a new online interviewing platform for poets to share their poetry, background, and inspiration. Thank you so much for watching today. We have a new guest poet to introduce you to. If you are a poet and you're interested in being interviewed on Poetry and Talk, just send an email to us at poetryandtalk at gmail.com and we'll get back to you with scheduling and information. We're currently filling up January 2021. Please stay connected with us on our Facebook page, Poetry and Talk. We appreciate your support. Please like and share. We hope you'll stick around with us. We have a great lineup of poets to introduce you to. I'm Leslie Sue, the host for Poetry and Talk, and I'd like to welcome our guest poet, Laura Fitton. Hi, Laura. Hi. How are you? Welcome. Thank you for having me. I'm absolutely fine. Great. Well, if you feel all set, um, we'll go ahead and proceed with a little brief introduction to one of your poems, and we'd love for you to share that with us. Lovely. Well, I'm Laura. I'm from Yorkshire in England. Um, I am a nurse by nature. That is my job. And I write poetry as a hobby pastime. Um, and it's also a good coping mechanism for me. Um, the poem I've chosen is something that's current. And it's about COVID. As in my job, I am working on a COVID ward. So I'm looking after COVID patients. The poem's called COVID-19, A Silent Killer. And I wrote it back in May when I had COVID myself. So I was trying to explain the what it's like as a patient, what it's like as a nurse, and obviously to give people a picture. It also gave me the strength to return to work because obviously it was very, very scary. And so I'll go ahead and read you that one. Okay, so... COVID-19, a silent killer. A virus from China named COVID-19 that's terrorized the world, an invisible enemy remaining unseen. Medics sent to war wearing a mask and an overall. We have witnessed the young and the fittest of folk fall. You attack their respiratory system and move on through their body. They're not allowed visitors, loved ones, nobody. You've isolated them and they must fight you alone. Some will kick you out of their system until you have gone. Some of the victims are very frail and old. Some of them fall as you take a strong hold. Was your intention to cause such heartbreak and to kill? Or simply to make some of us ill? The upset and devastation you cause worldwide will never be gone. You have even robbed us of our freedom. You have crept silently into our lives, filling us with fear. We cannot even hug our loved ones, as then we are too near. Two metres apart, we are told we must stay. The mental stress and mind games you continue to play. Unfortunately, many thousands of lives you have taken and we couldn't save. The strength and courage they bravely tried to fight you, they're all they gave. I, myself, I have fought you with an underlying respiratory disease. I prayed every night for it to remain dormant, please. You drained my energy and made me so lethargic. You floored me, I was very sick. I avoided hospital admission, I fought you at home. Unable to breathe is frightening when you are alone. I am a frontline warrior, a nurse, and we never give in. Your days are numbered, COVID-19. We're coming. Scientists and medics looking for cures and treatments, searching worldwide. Are you scared yet, silent killer, with nowhere to hide? You are going to be eliminated. You have made history, that's for sure. Vaccines, medicinal trials, we are closing in on the cure. The day you are eliminated, we all unite and sit patiently and we wait to hold our loved ones and to celebrate. We'll hold a minute silence for those who pay the ultimate cost, remembering and honouring our loved ones who sadly we have lost. Enough now, COVID-19, our battle will be won. A cure is coming to get you, 
So if I were you, I'd run. Laura, that's beautiful and um, really giving us um, some insider view um, from multiple perspectives um, with your poem. Could you continue to share with us in regard to this poem and, and your experiences, please? Yeah, I think when nursing on the ward with the patients um, and seeing how sick people actually get with this virus, um, it's been quite a worrying time. It's not just a virus that takes the elderly people, but to see 40 year old people become unwell and even not survive has been absolutely heartbreaking. And um, we've had to use our colleagues to lean on each other, especially I, I, I live alone. So my workplace was my family. And um, so isolation was really, really tough. Actually experiencing COVID, which I've had twice, I uh, had it again recently, um, it does play games. You can't go near your loved ones. They can video call, they can ring and ask, but it's not the same as having someone physically there with you, giving you that physical support, whether it's a hug, whether it's a holding your hand, and it's very distressing times for patients as well because they are missing their families. Um, it has been a very challenging time in nine years of nursing. I've never, never been part of anything like it. But I think it is something that all the world can actually relate to mm -hmm. because we're all going through it together. And it's about having that little bit of hope that one day everything will go back to normal and everything's going to be all right. Mm -hmm. It's just facing the hard times. Mm -hmm. And it, it sounds like the uh, poetry was helping you to kind of get through the situation, uh, having COVID yourself, you know, dealing with the, all the different um, physical symptoms and then the, the isolation, and then also with what you were experiencing um, with the patients as a nurse. Yeah. Uh, well, I actually wrote that poem on a bad day where I couldn't breathe. and. I decided to have a shower because I can't spontaneously write a poem on the spot. It comes to me. So I had a shower and the first two lines trickled through my mind. And I thought, this is going somewhere. When I penned it down and I read it back, that's, that was the result. So I think somewhere subconsciously, I had been quite nervous about going back to work and back to working in that environment. But I could see when I read it back, the fight that I found to actually go back to work. Mm -hmm. And it just gave you that bit of strength to put your uniform back on and uh, obviously do the job that you, that you do love. Mm -hmm. So I just, man, it's, it's quite a personal poem. And it merges my passion for my job as a nurse and also writing and love of that. And so yeah, it went down quite well. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, can you share with us the um, amount of um, inner strength and uh, inner resolve? Um, because it sounds like, you know, you've had to spend quite a lot of time just with yourself, you know, not being able to be around loved ones, friends, family, neighbors, and whatnot, um, you know, as, as many as, you know, as well have experienced. Can you just share with us a, a little bit more how you got through that um, in addition to your poetry, if you would, please? Well, in, when I had COVID in May, I, dis, I decided, because I went through sleepless nights, because it was keeping me awake, and I went through all my file of poems to keep myself occupied. So in the end, I ended up putting a book together. It's called Guardian Angel. It is a tribute to my best friend, Sophie, who sadly passed away before her 21st birthday, non-COVID related. But it was the push that gave me that I was hoping something positive could come out of a bad year. So it was a project that kept me going, it kept me busy when I weren't at work. I used music as well to uh, get me through these times because I think poetry is music that put to, to some instruments into a tune. And uh, some of the points that I've written has been inspired by songs and because some just trigger something inside me and then I start writing. 
So music's been a big factor. Obviously, talking, crying and laughing with my colleagues at work who became a more important family um, as well as my own. Video calls are quite good. Um, we, I was in contact with my parents. I was seeing my, my dogs over a video call, but it's still not the same. Um, it, it, it was quite a challenge, um, especially when you'd had a bad day and you just wanted someone there, physically there, just to give you a hug. And I'm quite a huggy person. I like to hug people. That's my greeting. So to be told no, it, it was quite hard. Um, but I do, but it was just we, we all leaned on each other mm-hmm. and I think that was the most important thing mm-hmm. yes um, in terms of your poetry Lauren it sounds like you get inspired by music you hear a certain song and then that kind of is a catalyst and then you said that you, you were in the shower so it's almost kind of like water you know, just kind of like that whole kind of purification process, kind of you stepped out and you started to hear um, a couple of, um, you know, first lines and then it just flowed out. Um, Is that typical of how your poetry kind of originates when you're writing? Yeah, and sometimes I have no warning as when the poem's going to come. So if someone told me to sit down and write a poem on a specific topic, I'd really struggle. Um, some of my inspirations, they're mainly personal experiences. So in Guardian Angel, I touch upon uh, friendships, my career as a nurse, um, domestic abuse, uh, dementia. So patients, my patients can be a big inspiration who I look after daily um, because there's just some amazing people I've had the honour of looking after. Um, it could be friends, family, pets even. But I have no free warning of anything. It could be just one line comes, the second line flows after, and then I don't know where it's going until I finish writing it down and I read it back. And some people are like, wow, where did that come from? And I honestly don't know. So when I read it back, my initial reaction is like other people's when they read or hear it for the first time, because it's like you're in a trance until you put your pen down and then you've got whatever you've written in front of you. Mm -hmm. Uh, Laura, we just recently had a guest poet that um, felt that um, her poetry was not coming from her. It sounds like you're kind of in alignment with that. Is that correct? Do you feel the same about that? I think because I'm quite a reflective thinker, I can understand where that poet is coming from. Mm -hmm. Um, But because I'm quite a reflective thinker, I think it comes a lot from that. Mm -hmm. And sometimes subconscious thoughts that are just floating around and you don't necessarily pay much attention to Mm -hmm. suddenly become more conscious. And I think that's where I find quite a lot of my writing. Mm -hmm. Um, The the title of your book, Laura, how did that that title arise? That title is uh, first of my best friend, Sophie, who passed away. she didn't see me qualify as a nurse, but she knew I was going into studying. Um, and she always said, oh, nurses are angels. And I went, oh, is that what, like how people see them? And she's like, yeah. So what I did is because it was a tribute to her, the whole book, because she would have turned 30 this year. And I got my close friends to decide on the title because it is based on a friendship. So we all had a vote and the Guardian Angel won. And I thought, well, that is quite um, fitting. But the beauty of the book is um, I've used it to raise charity, uh, raise money for my hospital charity. So it is linked with the COVID because we are building two memorial gardens for staff and patients who we've lost. And it's called Rainbow Gardens. So. Every time a book sold, a pound goes towards that charity. And so far, I've raised quite a bit. Mm-hmm. So I always said, make something positive out of a bad year. And Guardian Angels done just that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Laura. That, that's really beautiful. And, and thank you for your service work and all that you're doing. Um, with your poetry, 
um, you, you sound like you write on a variety of different subjects that, that you uh, have touched upon here in the interview. Um, in terms of the, uh, the COVID um, situation, is that something that you're still currently writing on? And how frequent is that? Um, how is that playing a factor in your poetry currently? Yeah, uh, poetry wise, I haven't written one since the COVID point. Uh, my writing's completely changed and I started a diary which even growing up, I'd never written a diary in my life. Um, but a diary was something I kept from the beginning of the pandemic. Um, it's one that I'm struggling to end because it's obviously ongoing. I think as situations get better, I think the poetry will flow again. Uh, but at the minute, I think all our emotions are just that high at the moment that it's quite hard to put them into words eventually I know it will settle and then it will come back. Mm -hmm. Well, that's an interesting process. So you feel, Laura, that when the emotions are kind of high and there's a lot going on within you and, and things that you're experiencing, that is to you not a time to write. You kind of want things to settle in mm -hmm. a little bit and then you feel maybe you have a clearer perspective and then you're inspired to write. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. What else about your poetry? Would you like to share with us, Laura? And my poems always rhyme. I have never been able to find a poem that doesn't rhyme. And, but people say that's my, my style and I can make them quirky, I can make them funny, I can make them really serious, I can make them have the shock, the shock factor. And I can make them come alive and when I read them. Um, but I have been writing since I was 10 years old and the first poem I penned then was uh, regarding the millennium in 2000 and we had a choice at school, I was 10, um, whether we wrote about, it was the first poem I ever wrote, it was Millennium Wheel. So that's where my poetry began um, and obviously it's developed over years depending what life's thrown at me. Uh, but I did use Guardian Angel as a support network because I wanted, even people who don't know me personally have, have bought Guardian Angel and I wanted to give them some strength that no matter how hard things get, that you've always got someone around, whether everyone's got some, we all believe someone looking over them. And I always want them to feel that, you know, they have got someone and, and to draw off hopefully my strength to give them and to use it as a support mechanism as well. Mm -hmm. Do you feel, Laura, that that's kind of your overall message with your poetry for people to derive strength um, going through challenges and difficult times and yeah. um, to, to know that they're not alone? Yeah, because I think that's where it comes as a nurse as well, because you're looking after people at their weakest point when they need that person to rely on and to help them get better. And also for friends and family, it's, it's the most horrific time for them knowing their loved ones ill. Mm -hmm. and, and even as nurses as well, it, it's difficult for us because we're not robots, we're human. So we do have feelings. And, and it is, I just wanted to, to support as many people as I could in a lockdown. Um, but just to hopefully help them through these hard times. And then I'll notice that my poetry will gradually get lighter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Can we go back a little bit? You mentioned, Laura, that at 10 you started to write mm -hmm. and uh, the, the uh, poem um, title and the, the poem theme was, you know, pretty, pretty advanced, pretty deep topic for, for a 10 year old. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was the, uh, the millennium, it was massive in the, the UK. It was all these things were going to happen when it hit 2000. Um, and we had a choice of writing about the millennium bug, which was the virus to crash all the computers, which we were, which never happened, uh, to write about the millennium dome in London or to write about the wheel. And I decided the wheel. And my perspective in that point was to give the wheel a voice. And uh, it was basically writing about what it could see around it. So 
like children running around playing having family time eating picnics everything that I must have got hungry before lunch as I went off on a tangent and started in the whole poem changed it was like a poem of two halves and um, that's actually gone down this quite well with a few people who's bought the book and um, but yeah it was a really really early poem and then after that one I did start writing for family when I was growing up who were, who were ill I used to write them a little card and put a verse in and that's basically where it came about and as I moved through school and um, we studied poets such as Shakespeare, uh, Seamus Heaney, some UK poets and I really enjoyed studying them and I thought maybe one day I'll, I'll give it a go. Mm -hmm. But I like it the fact that each person who reads a poem has a different interpretation mm -hmm. and they and even they see things that I don't see now. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I've learned a lot about myself to be fair. Through writing your poetry. Yeah. It's very revealing. Yeah, yeah. I felt, so I felt quite exposed at first. And um, because people have looked at Guardian Angel and said it's actually a biography of your life in poetry. I was like, ah, oh, yeah. See where that one came from. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and so uh, Laura, from Chen going on, did you continue to write poetry through, throughout your life and then into your adult life as well? I did, yeah. And mm -hmm. um, so I have put some of the earlier poems in the book, in, but I've not told anyone which ones were the earlier ones, because I'm hoping by the style of writing that they can tell. So I have been quite clever. Um, but yeah, I it's on and off. It's not a constant flow. Like I said, sometimes in, if emotions are high, they have to settle and then I can I can write. Um, and I have no pre-warning of when a poem's going to come. But over 20 years, I think it's been about 40 poems I've written. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's not been bad. Have you ever had an odd moment when the uh, inspiration came? Like, for example, if, if you were at work, did you ever get an inspiration and, and then you're at work, so you have to tend to those responsibilities? Or does it tend to come more during your free time, you know, when, when you're at your place? How does that play out? And um, when I was at work, I was on my final placement before I qualified as a nurse. And I just had the news that my friend had passed away. And initially it was shock, it was hurt, it was anger, grieving. And uh, all of a sudden I was on shift. And I thought, there it goes again, the little line. And I wrote a page long poem. And I just showed it to my mentor at the time and she read it and she goes, wow, that's beautiful. And, and I was shaking because I was, because mm. one, I'd accepted it. Um, and it was just, it just came from nowhere. I do write in my own time. Um, and that's mainly because I love listening to music. So when I got music on, it could be a simple song that I've not heard for years that comes on and then it suddenly triggers a memory. Mm -hmm. And I think it is mainly memories as well, whether they're the good ones or bad ones. They are quite a strong focal point. Mm -hmm. Kind of capturing those memories. Yeah. And sometimes it's like you can write, write your poems to keep someone alive as well, which I noticed reading through mine, I did. Because you, you, it was the part before you let go. And I did try and keep my friend alive as long as possible. And then I finally accepted I couldn't do that. And um, so it's, it's bizarre, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What else about your poetic journey? And, and thank you so much for sharing all this. Um, okay. you, thank you. Uh, would you like to share as well? Um, just that I think I will continue writing. And I get the odd ones, which is completely different to ones I've written before. I did one a few weeks ago about flamenco dancing because I was watching a dancing program. So it was all about hitting a rhythm with that one. I did the uh, one for the uh, National Bullying Week uh, from a victim and from a bullying person to try and like, put a stop to it. So I think it might end up going towards campaigning. Uh, I'm not quite sure which, which direction it's going to send me. 
Mm -hmm. uh, but I, just, I, I just tend to go with the flow and, and see what happens. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, Laura, we're going to need to wrap things up. Um, what closing comments would you like to leave us with? And if you could let us know how to stay connected with you and then how to get a hold of your book, please. Yeah, so um, my closing comments are, um, I hope everyone stays safe. And I hope um, people's enjoyed the COVID poem um, and that they all know that there is people around who can support them, who love them and want what's best. And to find me, I am on Facebook. I have got an author's page where I do regular updates regarding the Rainbow Gardens, the charity I'm raising funds for. Um, and it will show images of obviously how that garden is coming along. Um, I am on Instagram. I am on Twitter. I am on Goodreads. Um, and recently they are able to buy the book on, order the book on waterstones.com. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, every book that's bought, one pound is put towards that charity. Mm -hmm. And so far we're looking, I think it's about $200. Mm -hmm. at The minute that we've raised, so I'm really looking forward to that, to get going and, and be finished. Yes, yes, absolutely. Thank you so much, for Laura, for being our guest poet. And we hope the book goes, sells really well. It's such a wonderful cause. And of course we wish the best for you, you know, for great health. And thank you so much for what you're doing um, as a nurse um, that's, that's so admirable and such a wonderful service. So thank you again for that. And okay. with your poetry, um, please stay connected with us so that we know how things are going with you. Yeah, we will do. Thank you so much, Laura. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you everyone for watching today. We appreciate your support. Again, please stay connected with us on our Facebook page, Poetry and Talk. Please like and share. Thank you again to Laura for being our guest poet. Thank, Thank you. you again, everyone, for watching today. We'll talk soon on the next Poetry and Talk. Until then, be well and be blessed. Thanks so much. Talk soon. <laughs>